So Allendale is a, a tremendously beautiful place because we're in a, what is actually a, a national, if not world heritage site, and an area of outstanding natural beauty. And juxtaposed in amongst all the picturesque stone houses, there's one house where it could be a little bit of a TARDIS really. It's a bit different inside. Hello, my name is Neil Cole and I am passionate about classic science fiction and Doctor Who. I had a collection I built up over many years. It was so big, I had to restore the cellar of my 300 year old house and turn it into a museum. I've been collecting for probably about 25 years. Um, and in that time, I've collected over 200. It's probably about 250 pieces. That could be from a whole monster to a cufflink. Um, and if I had to buy it all again, from dealers, it would be probably a couple of hundred thousands, to be frank, if I had to start again. Ever since childhood, visiting the Blackpool Doctor Who exhibition when I was five in 1975, I dreamt of creating a sort of an, a venue, an event where you, you know, recreated that feeling of going into another world. And it's something I never gave up on. I always wanted to do that. So my wife and I had visited Allendale. I'd come to Allendale all through my life. I just suddenly thought, this could be the sort of place that would embrace the UK's first proper science fiction history museum. What was quite charming was I, I had in my mind this idea of a Dalek outside in a, uh, a small country village and, and, it, and it did work. I mean people, once the Dalek was there, the locals took to it and started to deliberately go past it. My collection was always very important to me because I think a lot of science fiction fans were all collectors at heart, I think, it goes with the, the territory. It was always a desire to somehow display uh, my collection properly and so that other people could come and share in it. The collection is, uh, broadly speaking, split into two sections, classic Doctor Who and a history of classic science fiction. Uh, the earliest object in the collection, which I'm amazed to have, is a helmet from 1940 from Flash Gordon, was the craft from Flash Gordon Conquers the Universe. And then it goes through the decades, and you go into things like the 60s, Star Trek. Um, I've got a little selection of different aspects of Star Trek. Alien, the 70s comes in, a little bit of Star Wars. And then, for me, comic reading was a big part of my uh, youth. And so I've been able to get some pieces from the Marvel, some of the recent Marvel films, and again, um, animation cells from the Marvel cartoons of the 90s. And then in terms of classic Doctor Who, the earliest piece I've got is a 1960s script page from the Daleks Master Plan, which is just literally a time type sheet, but it's come off the right as uh, typewriter direct. Then we go through costumes from the early 70s into the 80s again, until the end of the classic run of the show. And I've got about 10 full monsters now, which I'm a monster lover, so I have those unique monsters now in here for people to come and see. Making the museum has been a tremendous work of patience. Three years it took to get all the stonework cleaned out, rebuild a fireplace, reconstruct a staircase. All that had to be done before I could start putting display boards in. Finally, at about the three and a half year stage, I was able to put the first few props in and get some lights on them, and that was so exciting. A lot of the props in the museum don't come in ready to go on display. I would say about 50% are like that. And one of the, the key ways I've been able to save a lot of money and get this place up and running is that I do my own restoration work. But it's hard because you really don't want to see your own work. You want those joins to be invisible, hopefully. Um, and that's it. So in a way, you, you don't want people to know you've restored them, is the object the uh, core values of the museum. One was to stop unique pieces just literally deteriorating away. The other thing was to share them with people. So when people come in here, that's the good bit. Doctor Who exhibitions are sort of a, what's that, a tradition in Doctor Who. They've always gone run on and they stopped with the classic era. And so to be able to sort of carry that on even in a small way and enable people to see these objects, they're not just behind closed doors, is lovely. That's the magic of opening the museum.